Hi there, Bon Crowder with Math4.com. Math is not a four-letter word. Here talking about domains of functions. And we're going to look at three functions today, and I'm not going to write them in functional notation. Instead, I'm just going to write them with y equals um, y equals 3 over x is our first one, and my first error. How fun is that? So I have y equals 3 over x, and the concern in this particular video is things in the denominator that might result in zeros. So you'll notice here if x equals 0, I've got a problem. So I've got like a caution or whatever you want to how note it. Bad. This is not good. So you would say anything would go into this function except 0. So we can say all reals except 0. We could also write um, x is not equal to 0. Uh, we could do functional notation all x such that x is not equal to 0. You can get a little fancier and do all x such that x is a real number depending on how comfortable you are with notation and x is not equal to 0. You can do a line where you have 0 here with a gap and then you shade both ways. So there you have the domain of the function y equals 3 over x is everything except x equals 0. So this is where the problem is. Okay, so we're back with uh, another function. I'm going to use y equals 3 over x plus 2 as the other function to consider what the domain is, where it has a problem, and then we can look at writing out how to denote that. So if you'll notice here, the thing that we want to be concerned about is where this denominator equals 0. So you can tell that negative 2 is going to be a problem. So we can say, oh, if x is negative 2, we have an issue. Well, what if you can't see that right off? What if this is a little bit more involved? So what, how do you arrive at x equals negative 2? Well, you set the denominator equal to 0 because that's where the problems will be. So you don't set it equal to 0 because you want it 0. You set it equal to 0 because you don't want it equal, so you need to know what's going to make it be 0. So you say x plus 2 equals 0, and then you solve. And again, this is a very simplistic one, but if once you get into a little bit more complex, then you know doing it this way, you'll see, okay, well, let, let's sit down and, and do this the longer way. So x equals negative 2. Now remember, this is not the answer to the problem. This is where the problem doesn't work. So we're actually looking for places that make the problem not valid. So, so x equals negative 2 is the bad part. So we would write this domain is all reals except x equals negative 2. Or we can write uh, all x such that x is not equal to negative 2 and so on. So I'm going to scooch over to another screen and do another one. Okay, so now we have a little bit more complex situation. We have something other than a plain old number on the top, and we have uh, something other than a sweet little gentle thing on the bottom. So again, we're only concerned with the denominator in this situation. So we want to say, where will the denominator equal to 0, because that's the problem. mark myself over here. That's where I'm living, as you can see. Where's the denominator equal to zero? So we set the denominator equal to zero, and it's important to note to your students that this is not a trick. This is not, oh, we solved the problem by setting the denominator equal to zero. No, we're analyzing the denominator because the problems will happen there. 
So analyze the denominator by setting it equal to zero. I specifically designed this problem to be easily factorable. Let me cheat over here. This is x plus one and x minus three. If it's not, I'm in trouble. Uh, so then we use the, I think it's called the zero factor rule. Basically, multiply two things to get zero and one of them darn well better be zero. Or you're in some other number system where you know, you're allowed to divide by zero. That's a whole nother thing. So we have x is negative one and x is positive three. Again, this is not a solution to a problem. What this is, is it tells you where the bad places are, where to stay away from, where the function is not valid or undefined, as we would say. So we can say all reals except, except, x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. We could also say um, the set of all x such that x is not equal to negative 1 and x is not equal to 3. Draw it on a number line. Here's 0. Here's negative 1. Here's 3. Put you gaps there. And then shade and so on. And so that's how to find the domain specifically when we're dealing with the denominator. Of course, the other domain issue is going to be negative numbers in roots, in positive roots specifically, not negative roots. There's no issue there. So, and I will do another video on that, in, uh, and you'll see it on YouTube or on this same blog post. I'm Bon Crowder with Math4.com, reminding you that math is not a four-letter word.